So I just watched the Nintendo Switch uh, launch, and dang, um, it was a pretty good conference overall. Uh, I watched it this morning. I was playing games last night, so I didn't want to watch it live. I was like, it'll be on YouTube, and it was. So uh, it, it took me a while, unfortunately, to actually find... Uh, one without somebody, you know, having their stupid face, and they're just like, Hey, everybody, I'm Joe from YouTube. Um, this is my reaction to watching it. Like, fucking everybody was doing that. It was so annoying. The only one that didn't bother me uh, was actually my friends, James, because he doesn't do that kind of shit. It was him and Brady watching it, and they're just, you know... Nintendo fans, same as I am, and, you know, they, they had their holy shit reactions to stuff and whatnot, but it was, you know, they didn't, like, do it with the whole, like, over-the-top kind of crap, like, legitimate reactions to this kind of stuff, so, you know, kudos to that. If you want to watch one that isn't just Nintendo or some asshole, then uh, watch theirs. Uh, I'll put a link to the des in the description uh, for it if you want to, but anyway, um, yeah, so I watched it, and I'm not going to do, like, a full watching the whole thing again, and being like, well, yeah, this and this. I just want to go through a couple of points that I kind of written, wrote down. Uh, I haven't scripted anything, but just some points that I wrote down, just to kind of go through. Uh, I'm a fan of Nintendo. I love Nintendo. Uh, I have, you know, pre-ordered the Switch. Uh, I put 150 bucks down on it this morning, so I'm getting it. I'm getting the one with the neon. Uh, they, they look pretty cool. So, yeah. Um, rundown of the whole thing. Decent conference. Didn't tell us a whole lot, though, realistically. I mean, they told us quite a bit, but not necessarily everything I was expecting them to actually say. So, th there was no specs, though I assume that's now on their website, but I figured they would uh, with, you know, the whole... Con I mean, Nintendo's never been about the console races and stuff, but, you know, where they are going against uh, two uh, pretty powerhouse -y consoles uh, and power-hungry consoles, that they would at least try to go a little bit more in that direction. However, they didn't, which, fine, it's Nintendo, they can do what they want, I guess. But I, am, I, I expected a little bit more of that, but, uh, yeah, so, they kind of go through it in, um, kind of two parts, but not really. Uh, the first part is the main director, uh, of the Switch, like, the guy who ran the whole shebang, uh, going through stuff, the, the hardware, uh, stuff, uh, to do with software and certain specifications and stuff like that, and then they went into, uh, games which is technically software, but, you know, whatever. Uh, and then they ended it off with uh, the president of Nintendo uh, chit-chatting a little bit back and forth with some of the other major heads, like Reggie, um, and uh, Miyamoto was there, and, you know, those kind of people were all, you know, sitting around doing stuff. And uh, that was it. It was only an hour, hour and ten minutes or something like that long. It wasn't very, very long, but uh, there was enough in it, enough substance there that... Uh, I went and pre-ordered my console. And that's more or less because of one thing. And we'll get there. We will get there. So the first, they come off. They, you know, start announcing all the stuff uh, with the console itself. So the retail price, which isn't bad, $299.99 American, uh, which isn't too bad. That's uh, $399 Canadian, which isn't bad. It's still a little bit high. Um, I mean, realistically, like, what are we looking at here? Um, like, if I go American... USD to Canadian, like a lot of people expect it to be 329 or even 349. Um, it's just I don't know a bit high. Uh, no, 392, okay, but even still, our dollar fluctuates a lot, so I don't know. Just seems a little bit high to me, but uh, maybe maybe I'm just a little bit too cynical on it. I don't know, maybe, but uh, yeah. So they talked about that. They went into online services, and this is something I was hoping they would not do, and I'm <laughs> kind of hoping that people get angry enough uh, and kind of backtrack on it, depending on what's in it. Uh, but the online services, they, they are free until, I think he said October uh, of 2017, because this console releases on March the 3rd, if you didn't know. And uh, after that, it will be a paid service. Now, they didn't give us any kind of price point, uh, no details, no features about it, just the fact that in October, it will become a paid service, which means that Nintendo, the last bastions for hope, have finally given in to the whole paid services thing. Sony fell to it with the PS4, now they are with the Switch. Now, it doesn't bother me that much, because I, I owned an Xbox, but uh, it doesn't actually cost that much to host uh, these servers. A lot of them, they're just 
piggybacking off of their own shit. So realistically, paid services like that, uh, they're more or less just us giving them money. Um, you know, free games and stuff have kind of helped a little bit. Certain discounts off of games help a little bit as well. But, uh, you know, if if you're not doing that, if you're not buying games digitally, if most of the free games don't appeal to you enough, it's really throwing money into the wind, right? So it's kind of annoying that Nintendo would do this. And to be totally fair, uh, besides a few rounds of Smash, besides a few uh, Mario Kart races, not a whole lot, and, you know, I might play that ARMS game, which I'll get into later online a little bit, doesn't appeal, their online doesn't appeal to me. What appeals to me about Nintendo is a home coach system. You know, the system that you invite your friends over, you know, you get some, you know, pizza and shit, you get some pop, you get some beer, whatever, and you just, you know, you have some fun for a few hours. You play some Mario Kart, you play some Smash, you play whatever, right? It's a coach co-op uh, thing. That's what Nintendo is and has become, especially where all the other consoles have basically killed it. For God's sakes, Halo was a huge coach co-op game and they got rid of it. So Nintendo was left the last bastion of that, and it's kind of sad to see them go down that path. Mind you, there is still eight uh, player switch local Wi-Fi and coach co-op for the switch. So that's still great But if you wanted to play online at all after I think it was October You're gonna have to fucking pay for it, which sucks. It's stupid. I don't like it. I hate it. It's dumb I, I can't afford another subscription service like if steam ever went paid I, I would literally have no choice but to just go down to steam when my Xbox and everything else can just fuck off like it's it's getting expensive, right? Like you have, you know, I have I have my Xbox subscription. You know, I have to pay the internet. Um, uh, what else? Netflix. Uh, I pay for Spotify as well. So right there is what forty dollars a month without internet bill. Um, so you know, it's it adds up quick. So it's uh, I don't know, it's one of those things where it's going to be competition now, not just ah uh, well it's not it's pretty cheap I'll buy it for both my consoles. Yeah, it's getting to a point now where it's like I have to pick and choose. So you know I think I think subscription servicing stuff uh, is going to start to die off because people just aren't going to be able to fucking afford it anymore. So uh, we'll see. But anyway, that's that's I don't I don't like that. I don't like paid service for Nintendo. I don't think it'll work. I don't think it'll go very far unless the features are amazing. It's not going to go anywhere. I hope. So, uh, the system has no region locking. That's pretty nice. About fucking time. It means I can buy European exclusives, J Japanese exclusives off the internet, and not have to worry about buying uh, a second system from those regions. That's pretty nice. Um, the play styles that they introduced were what we expected. So, you know, uh, the docking station on your TV uh, and the handheld way with, uh, like, holding it like the Wii U pad, or detaching them, and having a little stand, and, you know, playing it like a TV. Uh, I, I like that aspect. Um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm a person that likes to travel, so when I fly, uh, I like to have something to do. Like, I have my 3DS, which is great, but, uh, honestly, stuff like, you know, I, I want to play other games too, like, not portable feeling games. <laughs> you know, maybe I want to play, you know, uh, Mario Kart, maybe you want to play Zelda, maybe you want to play whatever, right? Like Splatoon, I don't know. Uh, you can do that now, so that's kind of cool. Uh, the only thing that kind of sucks uh, is the high end of the battery life is six and a half hours. That's not bad. That's pretty decent overall. Like, that's that's acceptable. But they said between two and a half to six and a half. Two and a half is terrible. I really hope that it's on that high end, and they're doing two and a half just on, like, the super low end, like, if your battery sucks, like, after, like, four years of owning the console. Because um, two and a half is really, really bad. So I'll, I'll test that out when I first get it and see how long it does last on uh, on a heavy play session. Like, I'll put something in it like, um, I don't know, whatever launch title. Well, okay, I'm going to spoil it now. Breath of the Wild. Uh, is a launch title. That's I'm picking that up day one. I don't give a fuck. Um, I've pre-ordered, so I'll, I'll test it with that because that'll be one that I'm going to be playing anyway, probably for six and a half, seven hours. Um, so <laughs> we'll test it out with that and see how bad or how good it actually is. So we'll we'll see. Um, then he does something. He starts talking about the Joy Cons more, of course, because you know we're talking about all that kind of stuff. And <laughs> oh my god, um, <laughs> he's talking about better rumble and all this kind of stuff. But man, what an, there's an embarrassing little. I'll show it right now. I think. For example, pardon me, you can release the tension from your shoulders and relax while you play. 
<laughs> like, <laughs> he just he just got up, okay, from his from from what he was doing, walks over to this couch, and is like, look how relaxing these are. And sits on the couch for like two seconds, and then gets up and just continues on with the presentation. Like, beautiful, absolutely. Gr- I hope they choreographed that. I hope that was whole planned. I hope it was a it was absolutely hilarious it it was just like where did this white coach come from where what happened like i don't know it was it was funny uh it's super awkward but funny um yeah then he goes off and talks about uh the straps the uh the joy cons themselves the rumble packs with them now they're calling it hd rumble uh essentially it's just a better rumble for and more more sensory Rumble, like, there, he was explaining there's two gyros inside of each of the Joy-Cons to better detect not only movement, but also where the rumble and stuff should be, depending on where your hand is on it and how you're supposed to be holding it. So you can feel more uh, things and, and smaller quantities of things. He uses ice cubes uh, as an example and says you can feel one at the bottom uh, jingling around. And if you add two, you can feel both of them, you know, that kind of thing, right? So if it is... Uh, like that, and and it is, you know, more of what they're explaining there. Like that, it would uh, be kind of cool. It would be kind of kind of sweet. Um, yeah. So then he starts to go into uh, gaming and stuff like that, like games and stuff like that with it. So uh, we'll we'll jump we'll jump ahead here in the presentation to the games part of it here. So the first game they announce is called Twelve or well, sorry, Twelve Switch. I have it here as. 12, but it's uh, one two switch. Um, they 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 bring it up as like this, you know, like you see now, like the cowboys and stuff like that. But uh, um, it, it's literally just. I mean, it looks cool. Like look like look at this. Like you know, you got two guys, you know, dueling it out and stuff like that, and like really tense. Like guy looks like kind of like McCree off of Overwatch. The other guy looks like if Tor- Torborn went Western or something. But um, it, it's literally. Uh, just Wii Sports for for the Switch, basically. Like they, they they advertise it as as a cool new way to play and stuff like that. And you know, it, sure, uh, the way they explain it does sound kind of newish and and interesting ish. But at the end of the day, it's a bunch of mini games on one disc uh, that is at launch. Uh, it's it's literally it's Wii sports or Wii Sports U or whatever they had for the Wii U. Uh, they had a Nintendo Land for the Wii U, which was, was, wasn't was bad. Uh, it was definitely pretty good. But uh, this, where it's kind of more motion-y based and stuff, just looks a bit, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't look like my kind of thing. Uh, or or you know, even, my, even my family's kind of thing. It just, I don't know. It, it just, mediocre is the word that, that I, 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 would, I would use. But uh, I don't know. It's not... Not my kind. Not my kind of thing. I'll, uh, I'll I'll pass on that one. Now, okay, that last game was kind of ill looking, but this game looks awesome. Um, it's called Arms, and as you can see by the trailer, it definitely has to do with arms. It, it's essentially if they decided to make a punch out game, but have one of the main characters be Stretch Armstrong. It's basically what it is. It's motion controlled, but the way they explain it and show it does look kind of interesting and intriguing. Uh, if they do this, if they do the motion controls correctly with this console, not like the not like the Wii uh, or the Kinect or or anything like that, then this could end up being pretty good. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I'm hoping that if the you know motion controls aren't stellar, that you can play it with a controller of some sort, even if it is just the Joy Cons, that's fine. Uh, but it looks great. Honestly, it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, looks like a lot of fun with a buddy. Uh, that, it's one of the games that, like I said before, uh, I would pay for the online for just to do fights and stuff. Uh, it, it looks really, really fun. I mean, it's literally just boxing with stretchy arms, but it looks really fun. So, you know, I, ho- I hope it ends up uh, being pretty good. I, I really don't have a lot more to say about that. I mean, it's just it's boxing with with stretchy arms. It looks it looks good. That, that's it. The end. Splatoon 2. 
What? So despite that hilarious and embarrassing thing that he did during the conference, Splatoon 2 looks great. Uh, it, it, at first I was like, oh, it just looks like Splatoon 1, what's, what's the update? But there's all kinds of new weapons, there's all kinds of different ways to play, different power-ups, different stages, of course, uh, whole new story missions and stuff, which is cool. You know, it, it, they've changed up you know, the whole game, they made a, a, a true sequel, and uh, yeah, looks great. Splatoon 1 was fantastic, if you haven't tried it or played it, it's one of like Nintendo best uh, original IPs in quite a long time. Heck, it's their only original IP in quite a long time, but, you know, it shows that uh, they do have good ideas still up their sleeve for new stuff, and, uh, you know, it points to a decent future, at least with ideas, if they keep coming up with stuff like this. I mean, Splatoon is absolutely stellar. Great game. Can't wait for the second one. Um, sad it's coming out in the summer, and not right away, but that's fine. I I'll wait for it. it. It looks great. Looks absolutely fantastic. And I hope that means more Splatfests, because they were a lot of fun. They were pretty cool. Uh, the interactivity that Splatoon uh, had with the players and stuff that Nintendo did, like the Splatfests, all kinds of different events, tournaments and stuff too, uh, was pretty cool. It was neat to see Nintendo kind of getting into that uh, that realm of gaming, and I uh, hope they do it with Splatoon 2 as well. So, yeah, looks great. So I might get lynched for this, um, but Mario Odyssey scares me a little bit, actually. I know what they're going for, but it looks very Sonic 06 y. But I, I know that they're going for that kind of charm of uh, Mario 64. Hell, they said it in the conference that that's what they're going for. So it's going to be, you know, stages and stuff with the main hub world and whatever. Uh, and that's fine. It even looks a little bit sunshiny, but I don't know. The game doesn't impress me that much. And I'm not a huge uh, Mario fan. Like, the last game that I've really, really, really enjoyed was uh, technically Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. Uh, Mario 64 I did really like. Uh, Sunshine was fantastic as well. But, uh, it's I don't know, it just Mario itself starts to lose its charm for me. Uh, the hat jumping mechanic kind of looks neat. Uh, I like that uh, new feature. It looks kind of cool. Um, you know, it's probably going to be at least a decent Mario game, but, uh, it doesn't really look like it's, it's for me. Um, you know, I don't know. Bowser looks pretty good, though, as, as, you know, whatever he is, a mobster or something. So, yep. Next. Xenoblade 2 looks pretty good. I mean, it looks gorgeous. Uh, I played Xenoblade 1. It was really, really good. I haven't played Chronicles or whatever it is on the Wii U X or something like that. Um, I haven't played that one. Uh, I probably will pick up this one, though, because, I mean, it's a direct sequel to the first one that was on the Wii, and that one was really, really good. So I'll probably pick this one up. Uh, it looks gorgeous. Uh, 10 out of 10 on, on artistic talent there. It does show off a little bit more of what the uh, Switch seems to be able to do graphically. Uh, there's still some stuttery stuff going on, but, I mean, it is probably just a demo console that they're playing it on. But uh, right after that, uh, Team Ninja decided to come out and, and tease and just be a bunch of jackasses and uh, tease, uh, tease a new Fire Emblem game without actually showing anything. Uh, apparently it's Fire Emblem Warriors, so that's nice that they're not skipping the Switch and they're actually going to have a uh, main console Fire Emblem game. That's pretty cool. That's probably going to sell my friend Alex on this uh, console, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably pick that one up too. I mean, Fire Emblem is a fantastic game series, so uh, yeah, they, they just teased it. No, no cut in between, uh, no showing anything else in between. They just were like, okay, Xenoblade 2, done. Uh, Fire Emblem. That's it. The end. <laughs> so, okay, sure, fine. The uh, people that are working with the Switch, like, the, <clears throat> they, they show... It's very quick there, I apologize, but they show uh, who's working with them and that they have 80 games in development and blah, 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 whatever. But they show the list of people that are working with them now, like third parties. And there's some new faces there, some old faces too, but there's some interesting ones that I hope uh, do quite well. Oh yeah, Dragon Quest uh, 10 and 11 and Heroes 1 and 2, what would he do? I'm not a big Dragon Quest fan, so I'm just going to talk over that. Um, but yeah, there's some interesting uh, people on that, like Bethesda, of course. Uh, there is uh, From Software, the, you know, the guys that do... Like Dark Souls, so that, that's kind of interesting. I wonder what they're going to do there. Uh, but also uh, THQ Nordic, because of course THQ uh, kind of revived itself partially. So that'll be interesting to see uh, what happens there. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's uh, there's a lot of people there. Konami, of course, unfortunately, is there. Uh, Warner Brothers games, Havoc was also there. So yeah, there's some pretty decent ones. Um, then Atlas comes along. 
uh, showing us uh, a new game for them. There's really not a lot to show. It's a new uh, Shen Tegumi Metsu or something like that game. I forget. I'm sorry. It's not a game I'm interested in. So, uh, But if you're interested in it, 25th anniversary, they're doing one, making a new one. So, you know, Unreal Engine 4 looks really uh, quite pretty. So uh, that that's coming out. So that'll look, uh, that'll look pretty nice. And then right after the uh, Atlas game there, of course, uh, Square Enix comes out of the goddamn word work and just shows off this quick trailer of a, a, an older looking game, but newer looking game. It's interesting. The graphic style has got me a bit floored, to be totally honest. It's really pretty. Uh, Project Octopath Traveler is what it's called. Um, it looks gorgeous. Uh, the graphic style looks great. It looks like an old style Final Fantasy game, but with, like, 3D backgrounds and stuff. It looks great, anyway. It looks really, really cool. Uh, I, I was expecting Square Enix to do something, but I wasn't expecting that, so uh, that's that's pretty cool. So right after that, I don't know, Sega says something about games in the future. I don't really care. Um, I'm not a Sega's games and stuff, except for, like, Yakuza isn't too, too bad. Um, and the Total War series is also not bad, but that's, that's a PC thing. But anyway, Todd Howard comes on, and it's all like, hey, Bethesda, and Skyrim gets announced. Uh, people were expecting it. Uh, it's not a big surprise, but two good things out of this. One, Bethesda's working with Nintendo, so maybe the next Elder Scrolls game, the next Fallout game, something like that. Maybe Fallout 4 will get a port. Uh, who, the sky's the limit, man. So, you know, maybe this was a test run to see how well it's going to work on the consoles, how well it's going to sell on these consoles. Uh, I'll, I'll probably pick it up. I don't know, to see how much it costs and stuff too, right? If it's a launch title, a little bundle with a system or something, we don't know. So, you know, it's... It, and two, my second point, uh, besides Bethesda working with Nintendo, is the fact that they are embracing third-party developers. Like, people are like, well, Sega was on there and Square Enix and Atlas, but they've all worked with Nintendo before. So, yeah. And then, yeah, I, pff, I don't know. And then uh, Pseudo51 comes up, and he's all awkward with his whole awkwardness. He doesn't say anything. He just announces a new game that he's going to be developing with Travis in it. Who knows what that is? But, uh, yeah. Um, I guess we'll see. Probably No More Heroes or something. I don't know. Pff, this, whatever whatever they're doing. Uh, he can continue to be crazy. Pseudo51 is absolutely insane, but he's he's a great, uh, great developer. So we'll see what he has in the future. But, yeah, Skyrim looks cool. And Soda 51 is a pretty cool dude. So, there's two pretty good ones back to back there. So, then we get the company Dumpster Fire, I mean EA, sorry, uh, come on, and they're all like, hey, FIFA, woo. <laughs> um, yeah, FIFA, I guess. I mean, I don't know. It's, I mean, FIFA sells well, and they are in Europe. So, I mean, it's a decent one to announce on, you know, Nintendo UK, but. Um, you know, it's FIFA. It's not exciting. You know, it's like, oh, okay, a sports game that you literally put on everything else, so why the fuck not this? Uh, you know, it's, I don't know. The EA guy that they got on for this just seems like he's half asleep, and I know it's fairly early in the morning and everything there, but he just, he comes off as more stone face than anybody else. And I mean, yeah, Nintendo is awkward as hell because they're a bunch of older guys, older Japanese men too. I mean, not being racial here, but they are a little bit more even stern than, than North Americans. It's just their culture. Um, you know, <laughs> but they, they still try to joke around and they, you know, they try their, their best to, to be fun. And, and they are, even though they're awkward, they're hilarious. They're fun. They're great. You know, they're wonderful people. Um, and, and this guy just comes off as just a corporate shill, right? Like he, he's stone face the whole, he's got a frown on the whole time. Just totally stone face. He talks about like how he loves Nintendo and how he named the middle name of his first kid, Luigi or something. It just all comes off as just like way too rehearsed, way too corporate shilly, and just all around not very fun. Like, yeah, it's FIFA, but get excited about it. Don't look, don't stand there like you're a stone-faced dumb fuck. You just look stupid, especially at a Nintendo conference. Like, lighten the fuck up. So then, it, basically, he's, you know, signs off and ends it, and, uh, not ends it, ends it, but it ends his portion of it. And... They go through just this collage, montage uh, of games, and, you know, some of them haven't been announced yet. So there, you know, you could see the glimpses, of course, of Mario Kart, which has been announced. Uh, there's a new Street Fighter that comes through. There's a Bomberman game that's there. 
Uh, looks like some sort of multiplayer Tetris. Uh, Minecraft, of course, is very noticeable. Uh, all kinds of different stuff. There's Steep. That looks like Steep to me. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of different games and stuff that they never announced that could, I guess, be coming out uh, for, for the Switch. Uh, nothing announced, but who knows what we're going to get here in the future. It looks promising. You know, like, there's there's different games and stuff, different companies uh, that normally wouldn't work with Nintendo look like they are working with Nintendo. And that's the biggest thing the Switch needs to do right, is work with third parties. Because that's what killed the Wii U. That, that Like, people will say, oh, well, it was the marketing uh, that killed the Wii U. Or, oh, it was the... the uh, the Wii U gamepad uh, was was what killed the Wii U. That's not... No, it isn't. The marketing wasn't great for the Wii U. I will give it that. It probably did hurt sales. But the Wii U pad itself definitely didn't. Because when they did games right on that pad, they worked so well. Mario Maker is the pinnacle uh, of that working well. Uh, it, it just did such a good job. as how that all sort of, you know, really... Come, come to fruition. Uh, the, the detach between the Wii U and the console itself, so you could still play games while somebody watched TV or you know whatever, right? Like it was, it was a good concept, just not necessarily full potential. You know, they didn't really take out the full potential of the Wii U gamepad, but it wasn't something that was a console killer. Definitely not. Like just definitely, definitely not. So you know, it was, it really was. Uh, the third-party aspect is that people were like, yeah, okay, you know, Nintendo diehard fans are going to buy it. People that just really want to play Smash or really want to play, you know, whatever uh, game on the, on the Wii U, they're going to buy it or for their kids. It's a kid-friendly console, but, you know, it just... The third-party needs to be there. It, it has to be there because you can't float anymore just on exclusives. And I think they're starting to realize that, and I hope they are because... This console looks really great otherwise. Like, it does. It looks fantastic. And, and I hope it does uh, really, really well. But uh, there is one last thing uh, that I'm going to say before uh, we end this. One last thing we're going to look at. At the very end of the conference, after everybody signs off, everybody's getting ready to to wind down and uh, and pack it in, have a have a nice night's sleep, or, or for some people get the hell up and go to work, you stupid bastards. They show Breath of the Wild. They show a full trailer for Breath of the Wild. No more teaser shit. No more crap. A full trailer. And man, is it gorgeous. Wow, what a beautiful looking game. I can't wait for Breath of the Wild. This is the entire reason why I'm bothering to pre-order the console instead of buy it later is because of its launch date. It was rumored to have been pushed back fully till June, so even an E3 launch, uh, maybe even after, uh, and Nintendo pulled a fast one on everybody and announced it as a launch title, not, uh, March 3rd. So, yeah, that's, that's the reason I went and pre-ordered the console, because I'm like, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to pre-order this now, I think. Hey, fuck it, <laughs> you know? Like, fuck me, man. Like, this game looks absolutely stellar. Um... I, I cannot wait. It the way they present it too, like they're like a hundred years after we can finally tell you and it's a Deku tree telling him this and it's like holy shit, okay, so it's it's Hyrule, so we're it's gonna be fairly familiar to uh, Ocarina of Time. You know, you can see the castle and everything in the background, so I'm assuming landmarks are gonna be a little bit similar. Uh, obviously new ones, different ones because it's been a while, but you know, I'm assuming some are gonna be uh, recognizable. Um I can't wait. It looks absolutely amazing. Like, it's just, it blew me away. Um, it was what I was waiting for throughout the entire conference. It was what I really wanted to see throughout the entire conference. I mean, you know, I'm glad that what they did, you know, they introduced the, the hardware, you know, the Joy-Cons, how they're going to work, how the console itself is going to play, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, even the battery life's kind of nice. Price point's great. Uh, and, you know, the other games are awesome. You know, third-party work, it's, they're, they're, it's awesome. But I am a diehard Nintendo fan. And I was going to buy this console regardless if they're working with third parties or not. Uh, I would have agreed it would have killed it, but I would have bought it. Uh, because I'm, a, I'm an absolute money whore. Um, so, yeah, it, it, the trailer blows me away. It's so well done. Um, I, I can't, I'm not going to be able to show you the full thing here, obviously, but uh, just go and watch the full trailer and stuff of it. It's, it's great. It's fantastic. 
10 out of 10. Um, that's, that's it for me though, guys. That's what I got out of the conference, what I was thinking during the conference, what I wrote down. So let me know if you've watched the conference. What do you think about the Nintendo Switch? Do you think it's going to be good? Do you think it's going to be terrible? Um, do you think Nintendo's making good steps forward? Do you think it's taking steps back? You know, what do you like about certain things? What do you dislike? Uh, and of course, are you going to buy it? Um, that's it for me though, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next time. Peace.